The installation in this space is called the Two Eisenhower Brothers. Originally I wanted to make a film that was about filmmaking. That was like one of my key starting points. The other starting point was wanting to make something with a Paul Bowles story called A Distant Episode and also to work with Mohamed Mrabit who is a Moroccan writer. Then I found out that two friend, good friends of mine, Oliver Lache and Shazad Dawood were both making films in Morocco. So I thought, well, you know, there's these Moroccan-based writers and these Moroccan films, I should put the two things together. And so I, 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 want, I really wanted to do something which was um, part of this kind of genre of films about filmmaking. I mean, there's quite a history of it. One of the things he was particularly interested in was the phenomenon in the Moroccan Sahara of um, other people's film sets that have just been left abandoned there. So a biblical epic where a fort was kind of uh, just kind of rotting in the desert, um, which led us to the idea of taking on a film studio, a place where films had been made in London. I became aware um, of the transformation of Television Centre, um, uh, and particularly the drama block where film sets were constructed to be shot in the studios next door. What is installed here is raw footage uh, in different spaces in the drama block, which will be cut into a hour and 40 minute narrative feature film. This film, quite a lot of people have thought it was, it's, it's a kind of piece of archive footage that you found. Right. It's a soundtrack that's kind of archive. Yeah, the probably. soundtrack is archive. Um, but no, the rest of it was shot in uh, 2013. And um, I think I wanted it to seem a bit like a record, maybe possibly from the future or the past, we're not really sure. It's mm. from some other time, and maybe even some other space. Um, but a document that's kind of been found, maybe washed up on this beach mm. that we see in a lot of the imagery. Um, you know, City Ifni, where the film was shot, is this very strange landscape, very otherworldly landscape, where the sea has really ravaged the coastline, and you get these enormous um, arcs of rock, and it really looks like some kind of other planet. We were proposing an ambitious art installation, which took place in a working construction site. Um, all kinds of challenges, which you can imagine. This is a building that, you know, throughout it, you're reminded of the artifice and the construction of film. Being able to build these spaces, which are somewhere between construction and deconstruction, they're, they're somewhere between a cinema but also a film set. So from the outside, I've really tried to kind of mimic um, the sets that I saw in the Moroccan desert around Wazazat, where all the film industry takes place. Who is this guy who's turning around staring at us? He, uh, he's an actor who has a bit part in Las Mimosas, and I just told him to look back at me um, with very little direction other than just look into the camera slightly suspiciously. Well, he's done a very um, good job. And I think he did a very good job. Yeah. The, f the, the funniest thing was is that we, uh, I filmed him, and then they were supposed to do more scenes with him the next day. Right. Um, and he just disappeared. He walked off, and he never came back. <laughs> and so he's this kind of mysterious guy who's just only visible in this one loop. There's something about his look and the persistence of his look that's very amusing. Yeah, but also kind of, it has, it has a sort of a slight menace and... Definitely. Ben um, has a kind of outside eye which makes his films 
observational in a very different way than, than most filmmakers. His use of time, his use of image, what the camera alights on, the way he will not cut immediately from something, uh, make, it, make him a very, very distinctive filmmaker. Cut! I don't like to explain too much. I don't want to impart too many facts. I want there to be some kind of involvement with the audience and that they're able to use their imagination. I mean, I'm not really interested in a straightforward representation as such. You know, I always like the idea of all documentaries being a kind of fiction and all fictions being a kind of documentary. What we see in this room is all the, scene, all the shots that I, 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 I took in this one camp and completely unbroken, unedited, exactly the way that I shot them in camera with um, all the mistakes, all the repeats. I really like, you know, the, the actors' looks at the camera, they're, especially as they're non-professional actors, mm. so they, they, you know, the, the way that they look at each other, at me, at the camera, um, there's some really nice little moments which wouldn't make it into the feature film because they, they wouldn't sit right. I think the way it's turned out is um, beyond expectations, actually. Um, but there's another layer to it, which is the feature film, um, and we're in rough cut at the moment with that. And it's a totally different experience, because it needs a, a real cinema, it's, uh, it's a linear narrative, it's a very different kind of experience to the experience of being here in the drama block and discovering different spaces. I mean, I, what, what I kind of hope is that they, that a viewer would walk around these spaces and spend a really decent amount of time in here and maybe go back on themselves and relook at things and start to see the kind of interconnected points between the different spaces and the different films because there are, there are kind of crossovers which happen. It's always difficult trying to um, second guess an audience, I think. I mean, there are things that I and personally excited about, which I then hope will be exciting to the viewer.